Hey, everybody. Oh, oh, look at it. It's been so long. Turn that on. I have simply forgotten how to stream. Hey, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Long time no see. Uh, so, yeah. We're going to be uh, streaming or mixing the record. I've already kind of started. Um, the only caveat is I'm not sending any audio to you guys. I will have music playing. Uh, going to be... Uh, I'll show you some photos because I think I promised months ago that I would show you photos of like the setups and stuff like that. So we'll do that first. Um, I'm gonna, you're gonna see my screen uh, as I'm doing things. You just won't hear it. Uh, I know it's a little, little trolly, but what are you gonna do? I don't want you get, I don't want you guys to get spoiled before the record comes out. I'm doing this for you. Uh, but yeah, we're hanging out. Um, so yeah, everything is for the most part done. Um, gonna be, need them riffs. I'll, uh, I'll see if I, uh, at the end, uh, at the end of the everything, or maybe even at the beginning, I'll give you guys a taste of what each individual thing sounds like. Um, you'll obviously see what elements are going on. Um, but I'll give you a taste of things individually, but not as a group. I, I, I can't do that. That's not fair. Uh, but yeah. I'll show you some pictures of the setups and stuff. Um, in case you weren't around when we did the drum one, this is the uh, this is the setup I used. It's uh, my normal drums, Tama Birch Babinga kit, uh, killer kit, sounds great. Um, used a, an extra floor tom this time because I wanted some big thuddy, big thuddy boy floor toms. Uh, that's a bell brass snare. I love it. It's my new favorite snare drum. Uh, can we do this now? Let's see, can we uh, make these a little bit easier to... There we go, we'll do this. Uh, another angle. Again, these are drums. If you don't care about drums, let me know. I barely care about them. Uh, but yeah, so that's a close-up of the snare drum. Close-up of the floor tom. Big old 18-inch floor tom. Big and beefy. That's the other floor tom. Also, big and beefy. Little guys. Again, nobody nobody really cares about drums. Uh, mono room mic. Uh, extra spot mics for the cymbals. Uh, you can see here. I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen. You can't see that. Uh, that's how I was controlling everything. I was remoting in from my laptop to the studio computer so that way I could record myself. Uh, there's kind of like an overall picture of everything. Uh, that's the room mics in the back. And then I have a stairwell with two sets of stairs in it, um, and it's totally blank. It's a big old rectangular room, and so I throw a um, I throw a uh, microphone in there, and that's how I get uh, some big old reverb sounds uh, by using that mic. Uh, that's a little side picture of a microphone on the snare, and then that's the uh, when I mic the bass drum. That's the uh, array. There's a little Shure Beta 91 in there. SM50, no, Beta 52, a Heil PR30, I don't know, it's whatever this mic was. Uh, I think it's PR40, actually. And then a little Slate ML1 for some subbiness. Cool. Nobody cares about that. Uh, bass, real simple. One photo. That. <laughs> uh, Greg used his uh, Music Man. Uh, five string music man, totally bone stock, Ernie Ball, power slinky strings. Um, and then let me go over kind of what's going on on the pedal board before it hits the amplifier. So many mics. Do you have it all plugged into a big X32? No, I have two 16 channel snakes. Um, you might actually be able to see it in one of these photos. Let's see. Oh, right there. Perfect. So yeah, right here you can see uh, this was a snake that I had at the very beginning. Uh, 16 channels, 4 returns. Um, returns don't matter unless you're running multiple headphone mixes. I don't. Um, but yeah, so 16 channels were here. That's what I had for a long time. And then at the beginning of the year, 
I bought some patch base for the studio and I wanted to expand my inputs because I found that I was really struggling to get the detail that I wanted out of a lot of kits that were coming through, uh, so I just ran another snake through. Uh, it was very nerve-wracking because I had to cut through a almost perfectly sealed wall uh, behind this cabinet here to get the snake to the other side, um, but it worked out really nice. Uh, so yeah, bass. Bass. So again, Music Man uh, went into a DI over on this side. Vocals could come up a bit. Sure. How about we do both? Is that better? Looks better. Um, yeah, so this is the bass. Music Man. Music Man went into the DI. DI. Hey, what's going on? Tepco. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Tepco, how are you? So yeah, I for a DI, I use a Creation Audio Labs MW1, um, and that has, it's a DI and reamp box all at once. Um, I don't know if I have any pictures of that uh, because it's a DI, it's not exciting. Um, but that's, it's cool because it, uh, you plug your guitar into it, and for every output on the front, there's a tuner output and then a normal balanced output to go to like your amps and shit. Uh, for every one of those outputs, there's a duplicate of it on the back. So, coming out of one of those outputs, or the main output, goes into the pedal board, which feeds into the Zool, the Fortin Zool, which then goes into the amplifier. One of those cloned outputs gets sent to this key input on the Zool. So no matter how much distortion I put in front of it, which is a lot of distortion, um, it, it always is reacting to the bass DI, so it's always going to be super tight and not very noisy. So, uh, let me run you through what's here. Uh, this is an Archer. It's basically a Klon type pedal. If you're a guitar pedal nerd, you know exactly what that is. Um, but it's a Klon for basically 200 bucks. Uh, Proco Rat, gold standard, super cheap. I actually, this is, so these are all Greg's. Um, I'm going to buy a rat now because they're, I think you can find them used for like 60 bucks and they are so good. Um, and then this is a JHS double barrel and this is basically two overdrive boxes in one unit. And, uh, we used this side of the pedal into the dark glass for, uh, for most of the tones. And then from that, we stacked a lot of distortions depending on the part and I, I'm, I'll show you a few pieces of that too basically like if we wanted a part that was a lot fuzzier I would kick on the rat if I needed something that was grimier and more aggressive I would kick on the second uh, overdrive in this combo and then if we needed uh, for some of the cleaner parts if we needed just a little bit of hair on top um, we would more often than not turn everything off and then turn on the archer and then that would be the tone we never touched the amp settings so this is exactly how it was when we recorded it and then we used the different distortion pedals to kind of shape the bass how we wanted it again super simple that's the bass rig guitars this is exciting i really enjoyed the tones that we got um so these are the guitars used on the record uh, my Jackson soloist, if you tune into any of Pete's streams, uh, he'll tell you that we use this for all of the rhythm guitar tracks. Um, I know what a, what a fine array of babes here. Uh, but we use the Jackson, my Jackson for all of the rhythms. So m the main rhythm sound on the record is with the Jackson. We used Frank's Ormsby for quad track parts. Um, anything that required a seventh string, we used uh, this to quad track. Uh, Pete's solos were done with the red Strandberg here. And then uh, my this green PRS was used for um, any quad tracks that didn't need a seventh string. So any of um, like tremolo parts that we that we did an additional set of rhythms to, we used uh, the PRS and uh, not pictured, at least I don't think it's pictured, um, for clean parts. There's Frank flexing. 
always. Uh, yeah, I don't know that we had it here when we took these photos. Here's a, a better focus on the on the babes. Uh, Greg's American Telly uh, is not pictured here. We use that for a lot of the clean parts. Uh, my Telecaster, my semi-hollow Telecaster, uh, you can see it's toggle switch here. It's got P90s in it. Uh, we use that on some kind of more affected cleans. And this is the fun stuff. So we used a two amp rig for our rhythm tones. We used the 6505, not the plus version, just a regular 6505 on the green channel uh, set to crunch. We use that for like, it's not the featured amp. It's more like uh, what's filling in the other amp, uh, which is my Mesa Boogie uh, dual rectifier. Let me see if that's showing up here. God, I'm giving away all the goods before looking for my dual rec. Uh, do I not? Oh, there it is. Yeah, my, my uh, dual rectifier. Uh, awesome amp. Sounds like a dual rectifier. What more do you want? Uh, set to modern. Very important. Uh, set to channel 4 on the modern mode. Uh, this is a dual rectifier roadster. It's basically the same as the dual rectifiers that came out around the time that this was released. Um, but this has cloned channels 3 and 4. So these two channels are exactly the same. Uh, but you can do... Uh, I think the modern mode is different on these, I think. And then uh, channels 1 and 2 are from the Lone Star. Makes me sad, Panda. Uh, they're very finicky, but you can really get a lot of tone out of a dual rec with the tone controls at noon. I'm sure you already know this, Pete, but if if, uh, if you have your settings set to noon on this amp, um, they all kind of interact with each other. So if you want like a really mid-focus tone, you can turn down the treble all the way, and then it boosts the middle and the bass knobs so like you could leave the mids right at noon and then turn this all the way down and it'll be like you turned your mids all the way up it's there it's, it's kind of like this so if you if this is your bass and this is your treble if you turn down your treble it kind of does this if you turn down your mids it kind of does this like it pushes up the highs and the lows so it's little goes a long way with messing with the eq on this guy um but yeah so this is like the featured amp and then the 6505 is the uh, is kind of like filling in the mid range, giving it more saturation, and honestly giving it a little bit of clarity too. Um, and then yeah, these are the pedals we used. We go guitar into the left hand Wrath, and uh, f because it's not labeled, I'll, this is the blend control. So we see it's kind of at like one o'clock. So we're kind of featuring more of the HM2 sound on this versus a cleaner sound, like regular amp sound. Uh, this is the level control. This is the bass, so bass is cranked. Level is a little over halfway. This is a mid frequency. So once you, the middle and the high knobs are all cranked and then you can sweep this around to find like where you want that chainsaw to sit. So it's set kind of low because um, we wanted a little bit more of a girthier sound than we got off of uh, off of of um, rot eh, off of un, of rot and ruin. Jeez, say that five times fast. I can't. And then we got a presence control here, and then this is the gain. The gain is turned up just high enough to where you can hear the buzz saw. If that's all the way down and you dime the level, it's like it's perfect but we wanted something a little bit more controlled so we rolled the volume back and then gave it a little bit more distortion and then that's going into the horizon devices precision drive uh, again giving it just a little bit more gain boosting the volume a little bit i believe on this pedal where the volume is set now is what it would be if you maxed out a tube screamer and the bright switch or bright knob is about here and we're about two clicks in on the attack knob from the left hand side so not wide open but just a little bit uh more in and then the gates as low as it'll go because this also was going into the zool so from here uh pv went into the mesa boogie 412 which is boxed in only zool 
<laughs> uh, it's totally boxed in here uh, because it's a little on the noisy side and because I don't have the volumes cranked like I think I had the volume a little bit over two on the PV I didn't want a lot of the room mic to get in on this so I boxed it all in covered it with blankets um, Bob's your uncle that's that uh, my Mesa 212 though the Mesa Boogie was running into this 212 and this is an Eminence DV77 uh, made by Omega Ampworks. Uh, it's the Mick Thompson uh, signature speaker. Sounds ridiculous. And it has an incredible amount of low end. Does the boxing in change the tone at all? Um, yes. If you box it in too much, you get really honky sounding guitar tones. So I try to have it more... I didn't know that we changed the sound. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Hey, Pete. Put more buzz on the guitars, you coward. Listen, man. There's only so much I can do. That's super funny that I, I did not know we changed the sub sounds. That's great. I love that. One year. Didn't even realize that. Oh, my God. We've been streaming for over a year now. Madness. Um, but yeah, so DV77, um, crazy amounts of low end, super smooth, pairs, paired surprisingly well with my Mesa Boogie. Um, and we have two microphones on it. We have a SM57. The cone is, or the dust cap is like right here. So it's just a little off to the side. And then further off to the side is this Slate ML1. It's a modeling microphone and the model types that I used... You can kind of see in a poorly focused photo, uh, they're like right up against each other. Uh, and this one's backed off just a little bit because of where the capsule is lined up. Um, but yeah, uh, this I believe on both amps, because both amps or and cabs had a 57 and a ML1. And uh, for the models, I used a 421 uh, Sennheiser MD 421 and a Royer 121 model and just kind of blended them to where I thought they sounded cool. Um, and then here, 57 was on the uh, microphone robot so I can control it from my phone. Um, and this was the cab that we actually mic'd up first. So we got this sounding really, really good with the PV and then we added in the Mesa Boogie and went from there. The reasoning behind this mic being up here, this mic being down here, um, I'll show you in the session. I don't know if I have the files in this particular mix session. I think they're in another one. Um, I shot out the four speakers, shot out my four SM57s, and went with this speaker and this 57 because it sounded the smoothest. Um, and then this speaker down here had a lot more low end than this one. So I used this mic to kind of fill in the rest. And same thing with this. I used... Um, I wound up, the speaker is very dark, so I found one of my brighter 57s and then used that on the on this speaker, on the 212. Again, this is all super nerdy shit, but it's fine because you're not going to hear the mixes anyway, so. Uh, and then, yeah, that's the Mesa Boogie. These were the amps that we had at our disposal, um, along with, oh no, they're here. I didn't re realize I took the picture with them here. But yeah, we, we shot every one of these amps out and ultimately decided on these two. Um, so we got a triple X, PV triple X, PV 3120 with six L6s in it. It might as well be a triple X, but it is voiced differently than the triple X. Um, uh, Mesa Boogie Mark V and a Rocker Verb 50, which if uh, those of you, the keen eyed among you would remember that we used this combination on Of Rotten Ruin. It was really cool. Uh, again, the dual rectifier 6505, and then a Marshall Valve State 8100, uh, popular for the sounds of death, Meshuga, uh, any death metal in the late 90s, any 90s, early 2000s. That amp rules. Uh, I actually used this and the Mark V on the new cognitive record. So if you listen to that, those are the amps I use. Yeah, and those are all the photos. And uh, let me see if I do have, but yeah, so I don't have the files, like I said, but I do have markers. So how we ultimately decided on 
the uh, my white Jackson is we simply shot it out. We played um, the white Jackson, Pete's two Strandbergs, and his warrior, and we chugged around, played around until we and so the same three riffs. Tried to play them in the same way. I got them with the same input volumes and listened to whichever DI sounded best, and it was the White Jackson. I had the most clarity um, in some of the song's parts. We have like big arpeggiated um, like chorus sections, and when it got down to the low notes on the Strandbergs, they wound up either disappearing or farting out. Um, but on the on my Jackson, you heard every note and nothing kind of got like choked off, which I found super fascinating. Um, and then yeah, these were this is me testing out the speakers and uh, me testing out the 57s. What we can do, you know what we got time. Um, uh, you're not gonna hear the mixes anyway. Let me uh, open up one of those sessions. And then I'll send you that. Uh, I think this one. I think this was the last, the last one. So how's everybody doing? How's everyone's Thursday? Let me, uh, oh no. Let me, uh, let me get this out of here or on here whatever this is fine totally fine I don't have anything sensitive on here anyway so there you go um, yeah if anybody wants to ask any questions if you have any questions otherwise I'm just gonna wait for this to load up and then uh, glad my days off got switched so I could watch the stream we're glad to have you here I haven't been I haven't str streamed in months well, I guess that's a lie because I did stream. We did stream for that one time from the studio. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's been a while. I missed you guys. Yeah, so uh, the sessions are huge. I think I'm rocking right now at almost 500 gigabytes for this session because I'm mixing. Well, I'm recording and mixing everything in one session. Jury's still out on if I like it that way I've, I've done the last few records album released in 2021 doubtful very doubtful uh probably if i were a betting man i would bet probably f beginning of 2022 sometime i don't know when but sometime uh where are do I have them here? I don't have them here either. Ooh. Uh, let's see. I don't think we tracked guitars. Oh, they're right here. Right? Oh, I guess I uh, deleted them. Even here? Let's open up another session. Yeah, there's a lot of Pete's here. Uh, let's do... What is this? This is print. Let's do edits. Yeah, a whole lot of Pete's here. Yeah, I want to show you guys the, um, the testing process for picking the guitar and picking the speaker. And then uh, I'll reopen the mix session. And I'll show you guys some of the, uh, some of the, um, the, uh, I can't talk today. I don't think I need more coffee. Uh, I'll show you guys some of the, uh, individual tracks that I got going on and how I'm routing everything, I guess. Oh, yeah, check out this swell coffee mug. How tight is that? And then on the back says rebel or in uh in the streams case it says uh jeb bearer 
<laughs> the real trouble starts when we organize. Yeah, a lone Peter is, is not enough to do anything, but a collective of Peters. That's, that's where we get screwed. But yeah, I'm going to keep this stream kind of short today. Um, I do have to go to the studio and set up for tracking of a few things. The record's not 100% done being recorded. Frank has a solo still left to do, um, and then there are acoustics that got to get tracked. Um, but I am just trying to get a jump start on, um, on the mix process. Oh, here we go. So these are all the tracks. Uh, kind of going, like, this is the guitar tracks, right? We have the DI, 6505 with a 57, PV with a, uh, the modeled 121 and the modeled 421, and then the Mesa with a 57, 121, and 421. Um, you could tell uh, this is either a ring out or a palm mute because of that beefy ass low end. <laughs> so let's skip. Let me jump all the way here. There we are. Let's see if I can open these tracks without Pro Tools crashing. Uh, send me your energy. Oh, it's already done. <laughs> Overreacting for nothing. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, let's send out to... These are not the same outputs. Uh, let's do outputs, default, uh, actually just delete these, cool, and now are they here? Oh, form a Pete only called Pete, to a Pete subgenre, nice, uh, here we are. Okay, let me know if you uh, if you hear what sounds like a guitar DI. If you don't know what the guitar DI sounds like, it's okay because I don't have it here. <laughs> I'll uh, let me bring this one up. Oh, it's actually not a uh, here. Oh well, here I'll show you. Um, so this is how we tested the speakers, right? We have. Let me turn this up. That's getting sent. There we go. Can you hear that? I'll turn the music down. All right. So this was us testing which speaker on the Mesa Boogie we were going to use. Um, so if you're looking at, um, if you're looking at the cabinet top left or here we go, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. I don't know you, if you're looking at the cabinet, this is, that's the orientation. Um, this was just with a single 57. I pointed it right at the center of each speaker. So that's the top left speaker. Here's the top right speaker. See, it's significantly brighter. Here's the top left. Not as much top end. Here's the bottom left. A little on the flubby side, right? Here's the top left again for reference. And then here's the bottom right. So it's got a little bit more of a sharper mid-range and a little bit more low end than the top left. So that's why we used it as a blending. 
whereas the top left just sounded really smooth. Um, and then this was us testing top left speaker, which 57 we were gonna use. So that's one. That's two. They're kind of the same. This one's a little smoother and a little brighter. Oh. There we go. But yeah, this one's got a lot more crunch. Bass is a little tighter on it. See, this one doesn't have as much fizz, so it's super, like, tame. That one's pretty good, a little, little on the flubby side. That one's got a good amount of hair. This one's all top end. So I believe for um, the that 57 on the Mesa, we wound up using this 57 and then the 57 on the 112, we used this one just because it was a much darker cabinet. Um, and that's what we wound up going with. Uh, this was us testing. It was ultimately down to the 3120 and the 6505. Uh, so this was us testing the 3120. And this was us testing the 6505. The 6505 obviously has a lot more bass to it. Uh, we got that with the help of the resonance uh, control. The uh, 3120 doesn't have a resonance control, but it has some switches on the back um, that give you like the ability to either have the bass be super, super tight, kind of flubby, so on and so forth. So you can kind of dial the head in with the cabinet. Um, but obviously we wound up choosing the 6505 because that thing just has so much grind to it. Um, and the bass is incredible on it too. And this 3120. Eventually. I'm sure we could have dialed a very similar tone in with the 3120 if we took more than five minutes. Um, but we got it right away with the 6505, so that's what we rolled with. I think this was us testing um, whether we wanted it to be brighter on one versus the other. I actually don't know. But yeah, there's that. Um, and then this was us testing out adding in the second microphone. So we added um, the ML1. Uh, this particular one had the Royer uh, ribbon mic on it. Let me turn that down. I think it's clipping. Uh, so yeah, so that's what they sound like together. Um, and then we have, oh, so this is, now we get to listen to the Mesa. So that's what the Mesa sounded like with both microphones on it. Um, I think we tweaked it towards the end and then, uh, I know. <laughs> So that's what the Mesa sounds like, and this is with them all together. And then I believe at the very, very end, we messed with uh, different microphone preamps to get a little bit different of a tone.
Yeah, and then this is. Ultimately, the tone we uh, settled on. <laughs> what Pete isn't telling you is I was always watching, so he was always down picking. Cool. So that's that. That was the guitars. Uh, let me see if I can toss in the... Show you guys the bass tone. Uh, I don't know... Okay. I'm trying to see one where maybe this is such a tease. Uh, I want to see if I can show you one where he bounces around a lot. Actually, yeah, we'll do it here. I was gonna say let's take it to the mix session, but this uh, this will be fine. So here is bass. And don't be fooled by um, by the naming scheme. So these are both. Um, so if you're looking at this as like a stereo track, this top track is the DI. This is just a clean bass DI. And then this bottom track is a line coming from the amp. So the amp has a direct out on it that doesn't have a cab simulation. So I have this where I can kind of blend between the two. Um, and get like the direct bass tone, which sounds uh, something like this. And then I have it running through um, a amp simulator, uh, the STL Tones uh, Will Putney, which is just the, the bass sim on this. And then I mixed in some bass IRs. I'm actually not sure if these are the IRs that I wound up using in the mix. I wound up printing it down, so I honestly don't remember, but this is what the bass amp sounds like. Yeah, I don't think I use these IRs. This doesn't have nearly the low end that you're not gonna hear. <laughs> and it's the two together. Uh, I think this is a good. Nah, I'm not gonna show you that riff. Um, let me find a riff that he jumps around bass tones a lot. So there you go. Like this intro riff is very, very distorted, very chaotic. So super, super crunchy, super fuzzy. And then it cleans up for the, uh, for this verse riff. Um, and then it goes into uh, this little pre-chorus where it gets a little dirty again. Um, here's a good one, I think. Yeah, this is a good one. So this is kind of going through um, his regular tone. No, this is definitely not his normal tone. He's got a normal tone around here somewhere. Maybe not, fuck me. Um, hang on. But let's play, uh, so here's a good example. We go through three different tones in this like kind of short section, right? So we have So you have this kind of cleaner tone. I think this was his regular tone. I'm getting tripped up by the different bass tabs that we used. So like this sound would have been just the double barrel, the one side of the double barrel going into his amp. This would have been both sides of that pedal going into the amp. Actually, that's a lie. That's adding in the rat. And then this part. 
would be both sides and the rat. So like it's a very blown out section. So we w so I wanted a very blown out bass tone for that, and that's ultimately what we got there. And I believe this is just the one side of the double barrel and the rat. <laughs> very very sick <laughs> um yeah and then uh, i'll show you guys maybe a brief clip of a guitar tone very brief i want to show you one guitar side with a guitar tone uh let's see I'll give you not this song, not that one, or that one. Also, I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys a little bit of crunch. I'll give you some uh, some chug. I'll give you some uh, some chords. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll give you some chords. Okay, and I'll give you some. Uh, I'll give you some noise. How about some noise? Cool. That's all you're getting. And then, uh, yeah, let's open up the mix. Maybe I'll play some drums for you. I'm actually very excited. So the tones that we got for everything um, didn't wind up having to do a whole lot of replacement. Let me explain. Uh, for... I've heard the whole album multiple times. It sounds a lot like this. Um, so like for Atropus... We had like a day to do the guitars and we dialed in a tone. I really liked the tone right then and there and then despised it when I went to go mix it. So I used um, the amp sim tone uh, from the demo and layered that as like more of the feature tone. Um, and and like that's happened a couple times. It happened with bass on uh, on Atropus as well. Actually, there's a lot in Atropus guitar wise that I wound up disliking right then and there because we pretty much did everything in one day, um, except for the drums. But like bass, we tracked a an amp, and I really got nothing I wanted out of that amp. So I wound up layering in a bunch of other shit on top of it, so where you could barely decipher what was even happening um drums for of rotten ruin i did have some samples on to kind of help reinforce things atropus was pretty natural and this record is even more so i think the only samples that actually are heard besides a bass drum sample because come on it's death metal grow up um is the uh is room mics because i i wanted to make sure that i had everything i needed for detail stuff so i went kind of crazy as you saw in the pictures with like making sure my splashes were mic'd both sets of hi-hats my ride my chinas the crashes and then a general set of overheads and it only really left me with two room or yeah two pairs of room mics we had two mono room mics and then the stereo set of room mics um which sound great. I'll, I'll play a little bit. I can play you a lot more of drums because it's just blast beats and thrash beats. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna tell what songs they belong to. Um, but yeah, I was, I was very happy with the drum sounds I got. So I tried not to fuck around with it too much. So let me show you what I got. Ding, ding, ding. You're a big fan of my drum sounds? Thanks, dude. I'm, uh, I'm slowly growing to enjoy the sounds that I can get out of drums. Uh, let's send this out. 
I gotta do the same thing here. What the hell? They're already here. Default. Delete. Unless I missed it. I'll put... Here it is. Yeah, that... Whatever. Fuck you, Pro Tools. Alright, let's, uh, let's see if you hear drums. I don't know where it's gonna play. Where's the marker? Hello? Alright, whatever. Doesn't matter. It's one of the hardest things to find a good drum sound. Yeah. It's death metal and metal as a whole. It's a balance because you don't want it to sound like a machine, but at the same time, for it to match what's happening, you do want consistency and you do want punch and shit like that. If you accidentally unsoloed that track, well, for me, you it wouldn't matter because I'm only sending the drums to you guys. Uh, let's see. I'll play you a, diff a bunch of different stuff. So this is kind of a here. So here's a groovier section. Ooh, that is clipping. So that's a, a little bit of that. Let me play you um, the song of my people. Uh, here's some blasting. Sounds like blasting. Um, here I will have a little bit of spoiler. We do have a clean section where there are drums being played. A little, little groove section. Um, and this is probably the drum sound that I am most excited about. Uh, let's see. Like, just sounds so good. <laughs> Ah, oh, so good. That I'm more proud of that, I think, than any drum sound uh, I got on the record. Like, hands down. That I, I struggle a lot with clean, like, really, like, low-velocity drum sounds, and being able to get that uh, is A+. Uh, and let's, um, I did say in one of my drum streams, long long time ago someone had, i think it might have been you kellen had asked if there were going to be any gravity blasts or maybe it was you punk i don't remember who had asked if there were going to be any gravity blasts on uh on this record yeah there are a few gravity's baby gravity I literally ask you to do to add gravity blast daily. <laughs> yeah, I, I peppered a few gravity blasts. There is one I did not know I was going to be able to get. I'm debating on showing it to you. Uh, Pete knows the one. The really fast blast beat uh, going into the chorus of what Frank wants to be the last song on the record. You know what I'm talking about. Peebs. Old peanut butter. Uh, I don't know. What uh, what else can we show you here? That's got cool drums in it. Um. Oh, this has got a cool part. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have heard this. This is what it sounds like all mic'd up. Yeah, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that already. Um, you know what? I'll play it because you won't know what it's from. Uh, is it? It is in this song. 
right here. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. That's that. Adrian's mad with power, just playing everything without regard. Yeah, that's me. Uh, I'll give you a I'll give you a blast of a uh, of some uh, some bass. I don't know. I'm just gonna click somewhere. Yeah, bass. Uh, let me play a little bit of mixed guitar. Uh, I don't know. Let's go over here. Uh, uh, I don't, uh, d d sure. Cool. Um, I don't know. What's, what's in this? Uh, to, um, for, uh, drones confirmed. Uh, I might play a little bit out of here. I don't know what's, there's a bunch of different stuff. Uh, uh, cool. There's that. Oh, uh, surprise. Frank's here. Oh, we got a little bit of Greg on that, too. Ah, uh, oh, uh, look at that. Greg's here. Yeah, and that's... Oh, you didn't even hear that. I'm so sorry. Uh, here, I'll do the same thing again. I don't know if I'll get the same parts. Yeah, I've, I'm so sorry to be so mean to you guys. You guys are, are beautiful people. And you do great things. Uh, yeah, I'll 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 do the same things. Here you go. Uh, well, I don't know if they're all the same things. Of course, I picked the only part that doesn't have anything. Ooh, yep, there's that kind of shit. Uh, uh, uh vocals, vocals. Uh, Frank's here. Oh, I got the same part. Uh, so there's some Frank and Greg. Uh, here's, I don't know, what's this? Gone. Done. That's all you get. Uh, here's this stuff. Cool. Uh, yeah. Bam. That's, that's our record. That's all you get. Uh, I'm going to mute these. And uh, actually, I've been streaming for about an hour here. I actually, w so let me, I'm going to be some AJ Real Talk uh, real fast. The original plan for this stream was going to be me literally not talking at all, just showing up. You'd see my screen. You wouldn't hear anything coming from the computer. Um, and I would just like mix like i like you know tweak some knobs mess with the levels and shit you know mixing shit uh and not say a word and then it would be like an asmr mix stream and uh i'm but i'm i'm glad we talked i've missed this uh i i missed you guys and uh just wanted to show you kind of what's been going on uh we don't know when the record's coming out uh Technically, it's not even done yet. Uh, we are, like, a, like I've illustrated, we are kind of in the middle of the mix process. Uh, there are some, still a, f a few things that we got to button up regarding some tracking things. Uh, yeah, I don't know when. Uh, don't know when this is going to be done. Don't know when. Uh, oh, excuse me. That was awful. My apologies. Uh, don't know when this is going to be done. Don't know when the record's going to come out. Don't know what it's called. Don't know what the song names are called. Uh, I don't know how long it is. I don't know. I actually do know what the artwork looks like. It's spicy. Uh, and, uh, yeah. I missed you guys. I'm hoping, uh, maybe next week I'll be playing, I'll be, uh, back playing some video games. I got a lull, uh, in studio projects right now. I got a this to obviously wrap up on uh, I've got uh, a couple other projects I've got a I've got a finish up to send out uh, for release 
a uh, band called Gloves Off. If you're into hardcore, uh, they're great. I did their last EP, Life. I'm working on their next EP, and it is a certified banger. So many good riffs in it. Um, and then I got a few like video projects I got to finish for people that have been kind of unfortunately sitting on the back burner that are going to be cool. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping I'll be able to hang out with you guys more, play some video games. Uh, I definitely want to finish playing Metal Gear Solid. I miss that game so much. Uh, I don't remember. Did we abandon the Blood Level 4 Bloodborne run? No, that is still going. I switched the characters to something else at the end of the stream, and then we speed ran New Game Plus. Uh, that's right. But uh, yeah, things are happening. We're, we're making progress. You'll find out more about it when we let you. But we love you guys. It's been a pleasure uh, streaming for you guys this, this past year. I know we've all had fun. Um, Frank is going to be streaming tomorrow. Uh, I don't know what. I feel like he changes his game every, like, two days. Um, so, yeah, there's that going on. And, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the tease. Uh, I hope, uh, you, if you didn't enjoy the tease, uh, I still got your view. So thank you. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been great. Check out our merch. Check out our, uh, our band camp. We're going to be releasing some stuff as the record gets closer. We got some cool announcements as the record gets closer to releasing. I'm not telling you anything, uh, but follow our Facebook, our socials. Uh, let me see if I can. This is going to be super disorienting, but give me a second. Uh, uh, sure, home, taking things, uh, copying the, hey, welcome back. And, uh, uh, that didn't work like I thought it was going to. Yeah, exclamation point discord, exclamation point merch, exclamation point music gets you everything you need from us. Um... Ooh, speaking of, if you follow that link on exclamation point merch, we did a live performance set on uh, Don't Get Out of Bed Fest, sponsored by Massacre Merch. Uh, we did a really cool set. Um, we played four songs? I, f I forget. So Somebody who's in here is, uh, who's seen it can attest for it. It was cool. We had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, by we, I mean literally everyone but me, because uh, it was an absolute nightmare to move my studio to the brewery. Um, if go check out, uh, Vox and Hops, we were part of their brutal North America. We did a video for them. Uh, the beers all sold out last I heard. So if you're in the Philadelphia area, you can't get it, but the back and let you know it was really good. Uh, but Vox and Hops has a cool video that we put together with them regarding it, brewing it and a little playthrough of hive on there. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'm out. It's been fun. I hope you enjoyed this really dumb stream. Um, and uh, yeah, stick around. We're streaming pretty much every day except for Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, someone is. If it's not Pete with his guitar streams, it's Frank with his video game streams. And uh, yeah, that's it for me today. Thank you for hanging out. I greatly appreciate it. Be kind to one another. Don't be a dick. And we'll uh, catch you on the flip side. Sleep.